Hello, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to create a ring flash in Das Studio, and we can use that to catch some reflections in the eyes. I've just posted a video yesterday, or kind of late last night, in which I'm explaining how to create eye reflections with Das Studio, and the video was very successful. I've received so many lovely comments from you, so thank you so much for your, all your interest and your participation in the video. And one comment in particular really stood out and that was by Sir Munchalot. And he, like I explained that actually if you want an effect like a ring flash, you probably have to go to an application like Blender, create one there and then turn that into an emissive surface. And he responded and said, actually, you can do all that in that studio. And that was phenomenal. This is the comment. It's still there. It's very, very long and very detailed. So thank you so much, Sir Munchalot. I, uh, I salute you, sir. This is phenomenal. I, I'm really, really grateful for you. And of course, I tried it out immediately and I thought wow that is so cool I need to share this with you guys so this video is courtesy of Sir Munchalot is I'm just the messenger here and I'm showing you what he's explaining in the comment I have my Das Studio 4.10 open here already. I've got a model in situ. The model is the lovely Lorella by Rhiannon. She's currently on sale over at Renderosity, so check it out until the end of October, I believe. She's wearing the Southern Knights outfit, which is also on sale. And I'm using the Seema hair. That's a hair prop by Swam, and that's available from Das 3D. Let's see what we can do here. So. I'm just following Sir Munchalot's instructions here, and he says, well, to create a ring flash, let's head over to create a primitive. In this case, we're gonna go and create a torus. Just accept the default values here. This is not anything um, spectacular we're gonna be doing with it. We're gonna uh, zoom in on the, whoops, we're gonna zoom in on the torus here a little bit. And I'm gonna, before we do anything, I'm gonna double click this here in the scene tab, and I'm gonna call it, ring flash there we go the secret to success here is that we're going to cut this thing in half and hide half the geometry then we're going to flip the normals so that the inside will emit the light and that's what we're going to use as our light source so pretty much like what I showed you there last time. So in order to do that in Das Studio, we can use a tool called the Geometry Editor. I have it up here already. This is the, the kind of a square with a pencil type icon. If you don't see that icon up here in your interface, you can always head over to Tools and choose it from here, the Geometry Editor. And then notice that my um, 3D Manipulator tool goes away here. I could now left click and drag on my donut to select geometry, but I don't want to really do that. So I'm going to go and right click and create a selection mode of the marquee selection. So there's also the lasso and the drag selection. Drag, I believe, is a default in which you can paint faces in, but we don't really want to do that. So I'm going to go and select the marquee selection tool. And now I'm gonna go over and, well, first of all, I'm gonna unselect what I've just done here, the geometry selection, clear selection, so make sure nothing is selected. And now let's have a look at the donut right from the front. So from our perspective view, let's change over to the front view. And in here, we can now go and drag a rectangle just kind of about halfway over that donut, like so. Or maybe a little bit more, I'd like to catch that bit here as well there so 50 percent of the faces of the top are now selected and now if i go and right click on my selection i can go out to geometry visibility and hide the selected polygons and as a result they will they will still be there so it's not like a geometry editor in a 3d modeling program they haven't disappeared they're just not shown there so they're basically just hidden let me go back into my perspective view here and show you the result to make our light come out of the inside of the donut, we're gonna to have to flip the normal. So another very exciting comment that I've received on my previous video was from VW Singer, who pointed out that if I turn a primitive into an emissive surface, then the light emission will happen from the normals surface. And that is of course the outside of the primitive here. So if I wanted to invert that, I can go and select everything with my marquee selection tool here. And under geometry editing, I can say flip normal of selected polygons. So that will now turn this thing, the normals inside out. So the normals are now shining from the inside of the donut. And that's fantastic. Now let me change back from the geometry editor to my 
universal manipulator tool either with this icon or again if you don't see it that's under tools universal that'll do the same thing and now I can move this thing along now this is my ring flash so far let's go back to the scene and create a camera with which we can frame our model up much like I did yesterday so let's uh, create that new camera copy the perspective viewport here and change over to the camera and zoom into well, actually zoom into my models head And just like I did yesterday, I'm going to go and point her eyes at the camera. So select the right eye under the parameters tab. I can go under onto misc and point that eye at the camera. And I'll do the same with the other eye. Still don't know which one it is. The left, right, or the right eye. It's just you know, one of those things. And uh, once again, the eyes don't really point unless we just quickly move the camera. And now you can see that the eyes follow along and look at us at all times so there we go um, cool let's leave the camera like this for now and go back to the perspective view in fact actually let's go switch over to the side by side viewports so that we can see our rendered camera in here in fact let's switch that over to iray right now and uh, on the right hand side we're going to position our ring flash now with our camera and the ring flash in place we're going to do something very interesting that so Munchalot also pointed out that we can, once we have this thing in place, we can parent it to the camera. And then when we move the camera, the ring flash will move with it. So that's basically emulating exactly what a ring flash on a still photography camera would do. First of all, let's select this. Let's select our ring flash and bring it up a little bit here. And of course, make it a bit smaller as well. Currently, it's very large. It's much larger than a ring flash would be in reality, wouldn't it? So uh, let's see with that little white cube in the middle. Let's just shrink that down. And then we're going to go and turn that uh, 90 degrees around the X axis. So I'm going to use my parameters tab for that under transforms. It's 90 degrees in the opposite way. And we can kind of see it coming into view there in the uh, rendered viewport. We're going to have to sort out our lighting there in a moment. Right now, I'm just going to uh, position the ring flash. We're going to need to rotate this so that it's in line with the camera. It doesn't have to be 100%. You can be as accurate or as inaccurate with this as you like. So this is kind of where ring flash would probably be. It's probably a little bit smaller, but we'll see what the size implication has on this later. You can also feel free to change into any of the kind of full orthographic views there. But this is kind of good enough for us. So we're going to shoot through that donut and the donut is going to provide us with light. Now, just like I explained this last time, we currently have two light sources in our scene that we don't necessarily want to see so we can see nothing is happening in her eyes and that's because of course under the render settings tab and under environment we still have the environment map active so that's the image based lighting so let's set that to zero to remove that and then on top of that we also have the headlamp feature on our camera activated so let's select our camera in the scene tab under parameters let's make sure we're going to switch that one off as well and as soon as we do that, we have a completely black scene. So this is good. Now we're going to go to work and turn our half donut into an actual ring flash. Right now it's just a um, halved out primitive. So uh, with the ring flash selected, let's head over to the surfaces tab. And under ring flash, I get one surface, which is the default surface. And again, we go under presets, pick our shaders tab here. Under shaders, we find iRay, and under iRay, we find the emissive surface. Double click that to apply this, and then we're going to see that the donut has been turned into an emissive surface. Let's head back into the editor tab here, opening the default surface, and head over to emission. And much like we did yesterday, let's uh, 
crank up the color temperature to something around 6000 kind of personal preference where you want to go the luminance units let's switch that over to watts and turn it into something sensible oh, 15 is kind of you know it's, we're kind of getting there so if we zoom if we just leave that at 15 for now we can see that there's a picture and we can see that there is some reflection going on in Lorella's eyes here and that's perfect so notice what happens now if I move the camera forward or back now just the whoops actually I do show you this if I move the camera forward or back just the camera moves and not the ring flash so the advantage of this is that the light intensity will stay the same no matter what I do to the camera but in real life that wouldn't really happen that way so I've shown you in an earlier video how you can parent and group things together so right now if I take my ring flash and just drag that in the scene tab drag that onto the camera then it is parented to the camera and watch what happens when we now move the camera if I just uh, tumble this around here in the perspective view if I move closer to my model then the ring flash moves as well and as a result the light intensity increases as I get closer to the model and that also makes those reflections appear a little bit larger now you can of course increase the light a little bit so if you want to go to perhaps 20 watts then that'll take care of that and makes the model appear brighter so this is kind of a trial and error thing just like we had there yesterday let me switch this over to the uh, single viewport here so that we get an accurate like a larger preview of what our reflections look like bring that down a little bit so that we can focus in on the eyes here and again with the fact that we're pointing the eyes at the camera we can move the camera and the model is always going to be looking at us if you don't want that to happen you can also create a null like I've shown you in a previous video and point the eyes at the null and then position the null slightly off camera if you would like the model to look kind of you know slightly behind the camera or something you can point the null you can point the eyes at the null put the null wherever you want that and then if you want the model to always look at that you can parent the null to the camera so then when you have the camera here and you've got the null kind of next to it and you've got the null parented to the camera as soon as you move the camera the null moves right along with it and there we go so this is a lovely effect of ring flash reflections in the eyes and uh, that's all thanks to Sir Munchalot who told us how to do all this without ever leaving Das Studio very exciting stuff if you want to reuse your ring flash for future scenes you can indeed save this into your content library he says says uh, Sir Munchalot by the way he says go over to file save as support asset and choose figure prop asset and then you can save it anywhere you like he's also suggesting that if you set up different emission types here so perhaps one that has kind of a lower light intensity that gives the model a bit of an orange glow and one that is more blue and one that's more intense and one that's less intense and so forth you can save these things as material presets so then therefore you can build a, a quick and easy kind of shortcut library as to rather than fiddle with parameters you can just literally double click on an icon and then dial in different values that way so that works if this is kind of a warm kind of scene that you want you can do that at, by saving this as a material preset preset so you, again you go under file save as material preset and that will be something that can be applied to the ring flash later and then therefore change its surface properties which are then you know different types of emissions here's a look at a final render with those ring flash reflections in the eyes it looks phenomenally stunning so thank you so much for Sir Munchalot for these instructions I thought I'd bring them to the silver screen and we can all share them the character once again this is a Rhiannon's wonderful Lorella character which is available from Renderosity and he, she's also uh, responsible for the clothing that she's wearing which is the Southern Knights outfit and the hair is provided by Swam and that's available from Das 3D Lorella and her outfit are on sale until the end of October at Renderosity if you want to have a look at that. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, Sir Munchalot, for that wonderful comment and for all your comments. I really, really appreciate that. This is a wonderful community spirit we've got going here. Um, that is, you know, I, I really, I can't thank you guys enough. I hope this was useful. If you like this video, then of course, spread the word and share it with friends, family and total strangers. Bye for now. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.